mo pe ka mate to programa press club ya honi to faga fe a heta po hiva ke ka mate ke to programa press club ya honi aki ha lot before we kick uh, kick off uh, today's press club i'd like to invite uh, heta po hiva to uh, open up um, today's press club with uh, prayer uh he lia to faga fe a Katarina Gatohi ke fagahoko e lea taitari mo lea famalo. Afterwards, Katarina told Tohi from 87.5, and from a board member of Pina will conduct the opening remarks. Malo. Tamae vani uma o puna uma lo he hoani uma o fa malo ki afiana ko uhi ko e fenga male fa fo fa uma o fa ta ta hamaya ko uhi ke fano ngoa e talano afika o aki pa mo e fini mo i lototo a ko e ni ko mia kami ma o fa malo ko uhi ko e taleni ti ko tapa ki afiana ki e fini mo i ko e ni pa lava ki ne ma fenga male ke vahe vahe ya pa mo ki ma o tol ma o fa fia fa matoa to la male ki no fo ia ki ma o tol ta ta te fito. Aki nau tol me ngahi apiako ma alunga ko e tongani ke lava ke nau tolo to e ke nau loto ma nau ngai fa kau kau e mahu inga e kaveinga o ko vahe vahe mai i he fiafini pe lava ke tokonia ke finga ko lava ke nau fa hoko ma o kore ke kau ngi ma mo ke nau tol te nau kau i he pol kalama ko ya e fiafini ke lava ke nau Fahoko lele na ngai fatungi atakta ha. O kuma o ma o falai ki afiona pa ko loti o mai kole ku ma o fai wa fa su kaisi. Amen. Fatap ki afio ai tolu tahai o tua i o tau loto loto nga. Pe a pe foki ki ono fata tahai mai ki tau tolu. Ki he mal malu e falikoni i enshin tonga i fangaloto ke tau tal tal noa hangi koe koe proklama tal tal noa ng maheni o kui lo koe koe press club a e ngahi kautaha tu fakio ngongo mo fa matala koe tonga ni pe koe kautaha ma a e ngahi ba ako tau pe kau ku tu faki me yai a e ngahi ngongo tau inasa i tonga ni pe mo tople anga. Kei ke whakatapu ai peke hau koe ao tonga, koe ne awhio ta matu i ko tu pau ono mo e tahine koe ni nanas pau u. Pehe a e whakatapu ki e eik pale mi ao tonga mo e o eiki minista o e kaapneti. Kau maa e whakatapu ki e kau taki lotu ko toa pe i e ngai funga waka ko toa i tonga ni. Pea pehe a e whakatapu o maakehe ki he... Fana wako ka maaho mo ka faiako ka e pehe foki ki e mato ta fana u ta kau e polkalama ko ni ko e fia fia makehe ya tek mautol a e kau taha ma e kau faiongo ko ya tonga ke tal tal fia fia ki mautolu i he ahoni ke poloma polkalama makehe ko ni ko e fatap makehe ki a Amerika kami fa iloa peya ko mia kami. Ko hi ko hi ngai au tau i heni ai ko Amerika kami ko hi ko e tuunga ko ne ausia ko hi ko e pale falang langi makehe ko ne ikuna maana pea pehe foki mau fa malo atu e mia hoteli loto lelei mo loto fia mali e ai fa afi ko e na e fa hokat kete ko e ke ke lava mai e fia afi ko e ni o fa i halia fa loto lahi mo vahe vahe. Ki a tek mau tolu, tau tau te fito ki e whana wako, pea mo e tou tupu ko ia o tonga. Ko hi ko e tuunga ko ia, o ke i kunai a United Nations Vanguard Award. Me i he pune anga whakatahataha ko ia a mama ni. Ko hi ko e lava mea mo ho tale niti ko whaki ma kehe ki a te koe e eiki. I he mala e ko ia o e aati. Ka ko e whakahoko o e ngā hi tala noa, ka e ngā oe aki a e hiva. Tau tau te whito i ngai tala noa ki ngai kaweinga wha maman lahi, hange koia koe whiriri wake ai ea, kai uma a foki ai ngahi whakatamaki wha nga tu la, moe pau ke tau tu ma teu teu ke talia ngai pole mahu inga koia. Uma a foki ai kaweinga mahu inga koia, 
ke tau poke ki ai, ko tau ulunganga fara fo lua mo tala to ko fara holo, ko hi ke tau mau inga i ai. Mai lo be fo ki mia ko o to fo mai be ni me ni uyoke. O la ba nga to lo mai be me mala ba kapuna ki he fei to ko ni ke fara ho ka pro kalama ko ni. Pe ma o fa ma lo lo to ho nga tu yo tali ko ya ai fara fe ho nga i ai ki a kalaf moala. Pe ki he Palestine mo toe nga kau me mi pa ko ya o ka ta fa yo ngo ko ya atonga pe ke ke nga ta i mo tal tal fe fe ka fa ya ko ko he ma hi no ka te ma tolo e fa tongi ma ho inga mo si fo si ya ki no a ko i ko ya e fa nau ka ko ha ko tu po e fo noa pe mo e po po ko ya ko fa e ma to ta e fa nau ko hi ko fa la la ka tu nga ko ya o ya ko O hangi pe ko e fainga mali e ko e ko inasi e a mia kami ke tau inasi ko toai. I e fa malo ma ke he ki o ngo sino ngā ue ko nga sponsa e polo kalama ko e poni. A e ko e vaa a e pulianga Australia ki o nga whakalakalaka e tu unga ko ia o e ako ki he whai o ngo ngo. I nga e whanua e pasifiki ka wea tongani pe ko e pekmes pe he whoki ki he talita project. Ko hika ka wea inga mahu i ngai o ku teke ko e he talita project. Ko no whakalakalaka e tu unga ko ia o e ako be mai whiku me e whanau ke nau hangi e peko mia. O ao ki he tu unga hoko ko e kautaki lelei i he tau tupu. Pea e toko lahi e hani i he tek mou tolu. E ai pe whainga mali e te mou i niu i oke. Pe ko whainga hi whei tu o i mamani i he whakalakalaka e tu unga ko ia o e ako. And on behalf of the Media Association of Tonga Press Club, I would like to welcome our guest speaker for this evening, Miyakami, the recipient of the United Nations Vanguard Award, which she received for artistry in storytelling through song, composition, and singing, particularly in world and international issues such as climate change and how we as people become more resilient and to cope with the challenges. We thank you, Mia, for accepting our invitation from the Media Association of Tonga to share with us and together with the students, teachers, and parents what you have achieved so far. And I also want to acknowledge our sponsors for tonight, the Pacific Media Assistance Scheme, or PECMAS, as well as Talita Project. They do have thematic areas such as climate change and disaster, and they do support youth leaders at the highest level. Kai kehe koe ki i lea tau tali peia, mo e fra mālo atu homo lava mai i he hoani mālo au pito. E hoko atua programa ki he words of introduction a mai fra hoko e ofista a e pekmes ki tongani a taina kami pe a hiria te tau whanong me he whawhae a taina Mia Kami. Pe a hiria te tau hoka tike ko ngā e ke whehuko e programa pe ko Q&A. Pe ko kolan ki ka ua kou ke mo whao i whehu e tōru. E a pe a ko toa. Pe ka ko me ka wei ngā koe haoni pe a mo e presentation koe a Mia Kami haoni. Next on our agenda will be the introduction to the guest speaker which will be conducted by the liaison officer of PACMES to Tonga, Taina Kami. Afterwards, we'll, have, um, we'll hear from our guest speaker, Miyakami. Then afterwards, there will be a Q&A session. So each school, please form three questions um, in relation to today's um, theme and also from uh, Miyakami's uh, speech. Malo. Ko kore ke pamal mal mo ihe ngai fakatapu ko oso no hafaki ka ata ki he filmotu an ke fakafiloaki ato a he fakafe fakalang langi oku tauhenni a he poni um ki mo aya ko kore ke fakafiloaki ato a ko ki mo ko taina kami enoka pe ko ngawe. Ki he kau taha 
tokoni ki he ngahi mitia, kautaha mitia he pasifiki, aiko pekmes, pea ko poloseki ia ai di kautaha para mafola lea ko e aseria, pea ABC, pea oku mau fe ngawe aki wao fi mo kautaha mitia o tonga, pea kawin he polo kalama oku Fapaanga e he Pekmas. Malapito. Good evening. My name is uh, Tainakami Enoka, and um, I am the in-country uh, liaison for um, the Pacific Media Assistance Scheme, or Pekmas, which is a project of the Australian Broadcasting Corporation, and um, we work very closely with. Um, with the Media Association of Tonga and fund uh, programs like this one. So introducing um, the guest speaker, Ko Ameria Pilohi Valu Kami, Peko Mia Kami, Tawafa, Pea Haumi Tonga Redeka, Bangai, Komotua pe mo ha feva pe o ku faya ku itolo. Mia Kami is 24 and comes from Tonga Leleka, Pangai, and Komotua and ha feva. She, yeah, sorry. Komia Kami na e tupu hake he o ma tua ko tahol mo si na Kami pe na ya ne fanau fifin. Naya naufa naufifi netol kolaji taha kotui oku kike sola ha kia hata ha ai hingwa ko ya tai kami ko tai kami na e malolo he tau e tafa ki mua pe na ni malolo he kansa pe ki mua ki mua ya na e but when the heave are going walk on walk strong, be a koya na tupunga e pagokau koya ke fotu ha kauta ha wows ayok malohi alpito ifisi mo tongani ma ay longa ipa nau o kunau wesia he cancer cancer ko so mia kami was the, her parents uh, Taholo and Sinakami, and uh, her parents, uh, uh, sorry, um, her sister is Taikami, who was visited by King George the V. Uh, yeah, and also um, she penned the song Walk On, Walk Strong. Um, she inspired the uh, Wales Foundation, uh, which is uh, very strong in Fiji and Tonga. Nayako a miyakami i mama loa, side school, pea nau folau ki fisi, o foki mai he uanoa tafa, o ako i kuinza aloti college form five, form six kataki. Pea oku ai ne osko ia pea foki ki fisi, pea huki USP, o mawe mataitohi he Lao mo politics. Um, so Miyakami is um, she uh, went to school at Mama Loa side school, uh, went to Fiji with her parents, and then returned for form six at Queen Saloti College at in 2014, and um, she graduated from USP with a bachelor's in law and politics. Um, and she's now teaching at uh, Doloa. Um, anyway, I will leave it with Mia to come in and talk about um, what inspires her, what drives her. And so, yes, please, can we um, give an, uh, uh, an applause for Mia Kami? Thank you. Good evening. 
Thank you, Taina, for the introduction. Um, thank you to the Media Association of Tonga for having me and bringing me up here to speak and to share. Um, do you think I would need the mic? Would I need the mic? Yeah? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, that's fine. Um, so thank you, Media Association of Tonga. Um, thank you to Ancient Tonga for hosting us. Um, and thank you to the high schools that are here as well as TTI. Um, I'm really glad that you could be here. I know that it's exam time and you would rather be studying for your exams, but I hope that what I share today, I know you can't take it with you into the exam room, but I hope you can take it with you when you leave school. Um, and so as Steiner said, I am uh, currently a teacher at the Pope College, and um, on the side what I do is I perform and I sing songs in spaces like at conferences and at meetings. And um, it's interesting because I, with these kind of things, I like to keep it informal because I find that personally I'm not a, a speaker, instead I'm more of a storyteller. And so the way that I'm going to be sharing today is I'll be telling some stories about how I started and where I came from, and then I'll build my way up. So I'll be singing some songs. So I'll start with the first song I wrote that took me to San Francisco where I was able to sing at the Global Climate Action Summit in 2018. And then I'll go on to another song that's a bit more recent on, on oceans conservation and then I'll um, sing the song that I sang at the awards ceremony. And so that's kind of the, the format of how I'm gonna be sharing. And I'd just like to apologize as well. Unfortunately, even though I go to the Bo College and I teach there, my Tongan is not very good. So I'll be speaking mostly in English. Um, but if you don't understand something, that's what the Q&A is for. So don't be shy during the Q&A, and then I can answer any questions that you have during that time. So yes, um, so like I said, my name, is, my name is Miyakami, and uh, I grew up in Fiji, so I spent 14 years in Fiji before moving here to Tonga, um, just back in May. So I've only been back in Tonga for about six months now, and um, I had the privilege of going to New York last week to go and receive the SDG Vanguard Award. And for those that don't know, SDG stands for our Sustainable Development Goals. And our Sustainable Development Goals refers to the goals that the UN, the United Nations, has set for different countries around the world to accomplish so that they can create a better world for everyone in their communities. And so I was fortunate enough to head to New York where I received the award for SDG 13, which focuses on climate action. And um, climate action refers to the work that you do to help um, advocate or to help support and raise awareness on issues like climate change. Uh, does anyone know what climate change is? None of you, we live in the Pacific, you're meant to know what climate change is. So climate change is obviously in the name, the changing climate. And so over the past couple of years, we've been ruining our planet. The sea level has been rising. Natural disasters have been worse. If you remember while you were here, Cyclone Gita happened. When Cyclone Gita happened, I remembered um, one of our elders was saying that back in their time, they don't remember a time when cyclones got as bad as they do now. And the only reason that cyclones get as bad as they do now is because, for many reasons, climate change, and one of it is our sea, our ocean, is starting to get warmer because the temperature is rising. And so cyclones tend to come our way a lot more often. And so this is the kind of thing that I, I care about, that I'm very passionate about. And it started with my dad. Um, so my dad is currently an oceans consultant, a specialist. Um, so he talks about oceans and how we can look after our oceans fish and make sure that um, we have a future, we have a sustainable future for the future generations. And so I remember, now I'll start from the beginning so that you understand some context as to how I got. <laughs> and so back in um, 2018, um, I, started, I started uni in 2017 first. And so I started uni and when I went into uni, I realized that I didn't know anything about the Pacific because I took up a class called literature. And um, in the literature class, we were finally learning about the Pacific. And so at school, at school, you guys learn about Tonga, yes? Yeah. Yes? Yes, you learn about Tonga, which you're very lucky to learn about. For me, because I was in Fiji, I went to an international school. And because I was in an international school, I learned a lot of overseas history. I learned about America, Australia, um, Germany, Russia, all of those countries. But I didn't learn anything about the Pacific. And so when I went into uni, it wasn't until I went into uni when I was 18 years old, I went in and suddenly I was like, wait, P 
people write about the Pacific? We have like stories about our people? Why haven't I learned about this? I should know about this because I'm from the Pacific. And then I started looking more into um, climate change and how if we don't save our planet, there's going to be nothing for us to come home to. And I realized I'm living in Fiji. What if there's one day where I want to come back to Tonga, but there will be no Tonga to come back to? And so I started to think about how can I contribute, how can I help to bring more awareness to these issues so that people like me, when I was in high school, they can understand that there is a lot happening in our region, in the Pacific, that they need to know about. Because in the end, when we talk about these things, it's not just my future, it's your future. Right? If we don't care about climate change, if we don't care about the ocean, if we don't care about our future, then we won't have a place to call home. We say mate ma tonga, but what if tonga mate before we do? Right? <laughs> and so that's why we need to care about these things. And I thought, you know what, I'd really like if I could go to these big meetings and I could say, you know what, you guys need to be doing more. I want to go into the, to these conferences and I want to speak to our leaders and say, I'm a youth, I'm a young person, and I want you to understand that there's a lot happening in the Pacific that you guys are not prioritizing. You're not making it your priority. And so I thought, yeah, I could do that, but it was all just like this. I was just dreaming about it. I wasn't actually going to do it because I was young and I was inexperienced. I didn't know anything about science. If I go up and I say, hey, the planet is warming, and they're going to say, okay, tell me the facts. And I'll say, I have no idea. <laughs> and so why would anyone listen to me? Right? Why would anyone want to pay attention to this random 18-year-old girl from Tonga that lived in Fiji and she doesn't know anything about that stuff, but she cares about it, so it doesn't make sense. And so I felt like there was all of these things that I wanted to say, but I didn't know how to say it. And so I thought, you know, the best thing I can do is I can write music about it. Because I always felt like songwriting was the best way for me, personally, to talk about how I felt about things. And so this song that I'm going to sing first is the first song that I wrote that was that lined up with what I was trying to achieve as a young person going into these sort of spaces of climate and oceans and different issues like social issues. Eh? Um, and so this song is called History and you're going to help me sing it too because I just got off a plane like two hours ago so I'm a little bit tired so it would be nice if you guys could help me. Yes? Yes? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Come on guys, if Toloa was here they would have said yes. Okay, that's just cool. So this particular song, this song is, um, I wrote it in 2018. And so uh, the, the whole thing that I was thinking about, I was thinking, what sort of message can I have with this song that will encourage our leaders and our decision makers to care more about our opinions as young people? Because you're sitting here as high school students, as tertiary students, and you're probably wondering, if I went into these things, would they even pay attention to me? Would they even listen to me? And so I wanted to come up with this song to encourage our leaders to listen more to the voices of our young people. Because like I said, it's your future. All right? Our elders, a time will come where they won't be with us anymore and it'll be us. We'll have to be fighting for whatever they've left behind for us. And we need to make sure that they leave behind a future that is good, that is sustainable, and we'll ensure that our children, our, our children's children, and everyone after us has a future to call home. Okay. This song is called History, and um, I'll, I'll tell you which part to sing when I get to it. Okay. Yes? carefully It opens doors to potential hypocrisy If we don't learn from our mistakes mm, Cause you wanna get to work But you're not moving You say so much But never to change you first need to change imperfect people 
differences aside, we are all people. And yet we manage to form unequal opportunities, tear down communities, put a stopper to unity if it's a threat to our own breed. Cause you wanna get to work, but you're not moving. You say so much, but never listen. You say you wanna, wanna make a difference for you. Yes, you, you first need to change. So it goes like this. Um, thank you. So that one is called History, and that was the first song I wrote where I felt like this is the best way that I could explain and articulate how I felt about leaders around the world not doing enough 
not listening enough to us. And so um, from there, I started to write a little bit more. And I found that music had a way of telling our stories, that speeches and you know, little meetings and big meetings, music had a way of telling our stories in a way that those sort of events couldn't. Right? So sometimes if we go into a farataha, we just sit there and we just, you know, we get tired, some people fall asleep. And it's very hard to pay attention. But because all of us, inside all of us, we are all storytellers, we all prefer to tell stories, right? When you're sitting with your friends, when you're sitting with your teachers, your parents, the best way that we communicate is through stories. And so I felt that by going into these spaces of meetings and conferences, by bringing our stories through the form of music, it made people listen more. And all of us, as Tongans, as Pacific Islanders, inside all of us, there is a part of us, there is our mana, that is a part of all of us. And when we tap into our mana, that is where our stories are strongest. And so the next song that I'll be singing is the second song that I wrote, where I felt like, like I said, when I was going into uni, I didn't know any Pacific stories. I didn't know anything about Pacific history. And then I realized that the only reason I didn't know is because a lot of our history and a lot of our stories was written by people that weren't us. A lot of our history was written by foreigners. It was written by the colonizers. And as a lot of you will know, the stories, our stories, are better told when it's told by us, when it's told by our people. It's like if you go to another country and someone from that country starts saying, oh, yeah, you know, in Burma it's like this, 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 and then you're standing there like, no, I think I can tell you what Burma is like. You shouldn't tell me what Burma is like. Because in the end, you are the only person that can truly tell the narrative and control the narrative of where you come from and where you belong. And so this particular song was written about the importance of reclaiming our narratives. When I say reclaiming our narratives, what I mean by that is reclaim is to take back, to take something back, and narrative is how you control your story. So this song was about how, how can we, as young people, as Tongans, as Pacific Islanders, how can we take back how we control our stories? And so this song is called Mano, um, and this, is, this song is like my baby. Uh, it's my favorite for myself. I feel that it's uh, the one that I connect the most with. And so hopefully you connect with it too. Unfortunately, there's no part in the song that you sing along to, but you can press your voice so we can sing another song later together. Am I getting a better mic? Is that for me? Is it a better? Oh, cool. Thank you. How's your exams? Is it good? Did it just start today? That's the YouTube mouth. <laughs> you know me, <laughs> yes, I know the law just started today. Um, yesterday, I don't know. I was away. I just arrived today. I think they started yesterday. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
didn't bring your choir. All right, we'll do it again. One, two, three, four. Ooh, oh, oh. Queen Salote, man. But thank you for coming. Uh, you just missed one song, um, so don't worry. You have it. You've, you guys made it on good time. But um, like I said, the next song that I'm singing is called Mana, and um, 
like I said, storytelling. Storytelling is a big part of who we are as Pacific Islanders, as Togans, and it's how we share information. It's how we get our messages across. And so, like I said, this song is about reclaiming our narratives, taking over how we tell our stories, so that when we go to other people, we can explain to them how things happen for us here in Tonga. Because no one else can tell you your experiences better than you can. This is called Mana, and I hope you like it. Why do we accept definitions of how our people should be? Based off of written accounts of a man that looks nothing like me. He could speak our language, but not from his heart. When he wrote our history, he set us apart. Abandoned and bruised, left alone in the dark. But I won't let that past define who I am. When I listen closely, I hear my ancestors chant. Tell our stories. Redefine a past that was written for us before. Add a chapter, it's time to write a little more. Recast the future, it's time to let our story soar. This is my mana, my spirit, my soul. This is me. This is mana, this is me. So when did a textbook determine what makes me who I am? Pages that say nothing of the blood that was shed, the stolen resources and land. For there is still so much that we have yet to learn, hidden in the archives that they couldn't burn. It is rooted within us, look closely and you will see, you will see. So tell our stories. Redefine a past that was written for us before. Add a chapter, it's time to write a little more. Recast the future, it's time to let our story soar. This is my mana, my spirit, my soul. This is me. This is mana, this is me. She spoke to the ocean and she sang with the trees. She can be heard in the quiet whisper of the breeze. She is everything I aspire to be. She is mana, she is me. Tell your stories, redefine a past that was written for us before. Add a chapter, it's time to write a lot more. Recast the future, it's time to let our stories soar. This is my mind, not my spirit, my soul, this is me. This is mana, this is me. Cause I wanna bring power back to my people. Wanna bring power back to my home. Yes, I can bring power back to my people. I can bring power back to my home. Yes, I can bring mana back to my people. I can bring mana back to my home. Yes, I will bring mana back to my people. I will bring mana back to the planet that I call home. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so that was mana. And so history and mana for me, um, they sort of, they, they put the foot in the door for me um, by writing how I felt about these things, by, by connecting art and activism, like, at raising awareness on these things by connecting art and these things with music 
um, I was able to go from 2018, which was one of the first trips that I did as an, as an artist, as a performer, as a musician, and as a Tongan. It was the first time that I was able to travel to sing these songs, to tell our stories, and that was in 2018. Since 2018, I've had the honor and the privilege of attending multiple conferences. In, um, in this year alone, I was lucky enough to go to Palau, um, where I got to sing at the Our Oceans conference. I was also lucky enough to go to Lisbon in Portugal, which is in Europe. I was just in Manchester last month, as well as New York, and then I was in New York again. And so these, these things, like being able to travel just to share stories and to sing, is not something that I would have ever expected when I started writing these songs. When I started writing these songs, they all came from a place. They all came from the heart. It all came from what I wanted to accomplish as a young person that cared about these issues. And when I talk about issues, I'm not just talking about climate change, I'm not just talking about oceans. For you, it might be something else. It might be women's empowerment, it might be social inequality, it might be something involved with politics and government or something with the church. It's different for everyone. And so what I hope that you could take from here is not think like, oh man, I can't sing, I can't play guitar, I can't write, how am I ever going to contribute to my community? How am I ever going to contribute to my society? It's not a matter of what you can do, it's a matter of how much you care about what you want to do. And that's what will carry you into places like the spaces that I've been lucky enough to be in. And so, like I said, I've talked about climate change, but I think it's really important that I highlight ocean conservation. Now that sounds really boring because conservation is a very boring word. It's, conservation refers to protecting and saving our natural resources. So when we talk about ocean conservation, we're referring to the ocean. Say it with me. The ocean. Great job. What oh, good students. You guys will do great in your exams. And so we talk about ocean conservation. And as you know, here in Tonga, we go to the other end of Tonga, there's Tahi. We go to the other side, we go to Hahake side, ocean. We go Hihifo side, ocean. Well, actually not Hihifo side. If you keep going like Hihifo side, then you see ocean. But what I'm trying to say is the ocean connects all of us, right? We talk about like, oh yeah, we're really far away from Fiji. We're really far away from Samoa. We're really far away from all of these different Pacific islands. And people think that because the ocean separates us physically, then it doesn't connect us, right? But that's not right. In the end, the ocean is what connects us. It's what brings us together. Because a lot of who we are, a lot of our identity exists in the ocean. We think about our ancestors, so us gang from Hapai. Is anyone from Hapai? Anyone? Yeah. Woo. There's not enough of you, but it's okay. So if you're from Hapai, you would know that Hapai gang, be quiet. So um, for those that understand, from in Hapai, we live along the beach. We depend on the ocean for fish. We depend on the ocean for food. Um, at one point, I'm pretty sure one of my relatives used it as a toilet. But it's fine, the ocean is part of many... Guys, you can laugh. Man, please, can you laugh, 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 Bokata. Thank you. Um. <laughs> okay, you can stop laughing now. You can stop now, thank you. And so, when we talk about our ocean, we're talking about a part of who we are. Okay, we're talking about the potential of losing a part of who we are if we don't focus on trying to sustain and maintain our ocean's health. And so a lot of people question like, how can our ocean have a health? It's a body of water. No, it's not true. The ocean depends on our ability to look after it, right? Because years and years ago, the ocean looked after our ancestors by providing our ancestors with food, providing our ancestors with a way of travel. And now what we've done is we've turned it right around and we don't take care of her anymore. We've stopped listening to the ocean. She, we've taken more than we need to. We've abused our privilege of having access to ocean. And so now our ocean is decaying as a result of that. And so this next song that I'm writing, which is the most recent one that I wrote for Lisbon, for Portugal, for the Oceans Conference, um, this one talks about how we've stopped listening to the ocean. And the way that I see it, I see the ocean as a woman and that she has provided for us for years, for centuries, for generations. And what we've done is we've stopped listening to her. We've raised generations of people like yourselves that live near the ocean, that we see the ocean every day, but we've stopped listening to her. And so this song is called Saltwater. And the reason I called it Saltwater was because 
I, I saw this quote, I'm paraphrasing it a bit, but it was saying that in the end, the ocean isn't just outside of us where we just see it, it's also in us because we cry, salt water, we sweat, salt water. And so the ocean doesn't just exist outside, it exists in all of us. So that's why the song is called Salt Water and um, I hope you like it. talk what would we hear would we drown it out as noise when those before us heard her loud and clear we stopped listening a long time ago lost the luxury of time when we moved way too slow if we can't fight fire then we can't inspire a difference can we make a difference if we can't nurture what brings us together we're choosing ignorance are we ignorant blood is thicker than water but there's salt water in my veins if we trust the ocean then she will do the same her songs in the tides and her stories live on our shores did we do enough or can we do so much more uh, if she could cry I know she'd weep over all the broken promises, all the ones that we couldn't keep. Cause we've had answers, but never the time. Never a voice at the table, even though it's us on the front lines. If we can't fight fire, then we can't inspire a difference. Can we make a difference? If we can't nurture what brings us together, we're choosing ignorance. Are we ignorant? Cause blood is thicker than water, but there's salt water in my veins. If we trust the ocean, then she will do the same. Her songs in the tides and her stories live on our shores. Did we do enough or can we do so much more? How much more? Did we do enough or can we do so much more? She is every second breath, a part of who we are. She binds us all together no matter where we are. We've had generations of care. We've had generations of trust. Now we must love the ocean the way that she's loved us. Blood is thicker than water, but there's so water in my veins. If we trust the ocean, then she will do the same. Her songs in the tides and her stories live on our shores. Did we do enough or can we do so much more? How much more? Cause we can do, we can do so much more. I know we can, I know we can do, we can do so much. Thank you. Um, yes, so those three particular songs um, played a really big part in, in explaining and portraying what I feel passionate about. Um, 
And art has a very special way of doing that, whether you sing, whether you dance, whether you paint, whether you play an instrument, it's all very different. And um, because of these, these stories that I was very, very blessed to be able to take around the world and share, I was lucky enough to go to New York and receive the SDG Vanguard Award. And so when I went to New York, um, I found out like a month ago and I didn't process it until I got to New York and I walked into the venue with my parents. And um, it was only then that I realized like, whoa, I'm getting an award, that's so weird. Because for me, the way that I see it is I, I genuinely do this because I love it. There's no, there's no motive behind where I was like, I wanna get famous, I wanna get fans and money and fame, it's not like that. For me, the reason that I really enjoy doing what I do is because it's genuinely something that I care about. It's something that I feel is important. And so being able to go up and accept that award, I didn't feel like that that was something I did on my own because it wasn't. It was something that I did with the support of my family, with friends, with different people around the region, around the Pacific, um, supporting me as I went up. And so when it comes to caring about these things, it's very important that you come back to your village you come back to your community and you come back to your home, to Tonga. And bringing everything back to where you started is what keeps you passionate. It's what keeps you caring for the things that you feel are important. And so um, I'll, I'll share my final song. And I hope that you feel like I wasn't just talking rubbish and that you were sitting there like, oh yeah, she actually has a good point. Um, because this is, I genuinely do believe that every single one of you here has the potential to do so much for the Pacific and for Tonga. And what you need to do when you finish high school is don't restrict yourself to just thinking within Tonga. Think about the Pacific, think about the world. There's so much that you carry with you everywhere you go. And so my advice is with the things that I've been very fortunate enough to do with the support of loved ones and friends, is that when you leave high school, don't just leave your creative mindset in high school. When you go into different places, be creative, be, think outside the box, be a critical thinker. Because when you think outside the box, it takes, you to so, it takes you so much further than you could have ever anticipated. And because my dad was constantly like, Mia, you could write that better. You can think a lot more different if you thought about it this way. When, I, when he taught me how to think critically, when he taught me how to, taught me how to think outside the box, it was then and only then that I was able to understand, yeah, music is the best way that I could go ahead with this, not going and saying a speech. And so I encourage you all, after I sing this song and after you all go home, to think about what is something that you care about when you, when you think about Tonga, when you think about the Pacific. What's something that you hope that your children, your children's children will have when they come into the world in the future? And so this final song is called Rooted. Um, and we'll sing this one together as well. I'll stop the song halfway and we can sing it together. Um, but this song I had initially written for an anti-logging campaign in the Oro province of Papua New Guinea. Um, and it was, this is what it sounded like when it started. Um, if some of you have heard it, you would have heard it with all the drums and the choir and the doof, doof, doof. And it sounded a lot cooler with the effects and everything. But I think that if we sang it together, it would sound cooler than that version. And so Rooted, I had initially written for that campaign um, but they never used it, so I took it back in 2018, and I said, you know what, I'll wait until there's a time where I can work on this song, which will probably be in like 10 years. But, to my surprise, it was not in 10 years, it was in two, two, sorry, I'm an English teacher, not a math teacher. So it was two years um, until, which was in 2020, which was when I finally got into the studio to record the song. And um, the song became an anthem for the Pacific, because it spoke about us being resilient. Um, um, and resilient means to withstand any problems, any struggles, any battles that are thrown at us. And so um, we, as Pacific people, as Target people, are resilient. Because Gita, you guys were hit by a volcano at the start of the year, and you're all here. And Tonga is back to normal, like nothing happened. We withstood COVID. We are resilient people. It's true. It's proof. All of these things happening. And so I hope that this song portrays that message and that you're able to take it with you after this event. And so um, thank you for having me and for listening. Um, and yeah, this, we'll have a Q&A after this so you can ask me any questions and we'll have a chat. So I hope you liked it and I hope you liked this song. 
And thank you very much for listening. Maro. Don't clap, it's okay. <laughs> Once pristine, once untouched, once pure, all of that's no longer there anymore. Stripped down, torn apart, shipped away, piece of our hearts, yet still we breathe. Like the wind, we still move, like the waves we rise high. Like the sun, we never die. We will stay standing, hear our calling. We rooted to the ground, we're here to stay. No staying quiet, we stand united. We rooted to the ground, can't tear us down. We're here to stay. Oh. together it goes in. journalist, no stranger to the media realm. Uh, he will be leading and facilitating the Q&A session. Uh, reminder to schools, your free questions based on um, Miyakami's uh, presentation 
and her songs. Three questions each from each school, please. Uh, cut off. Fadulowa to Gae at Amoa gave Kahoka to a Fatongia Goini, Goeta Taimin Gefaya and I Ufehui Pamono Tari. I was told uh, by Taina that they are uh, each of the school uh, groups that are here, they have three questions uh, each. Uh, and I, I see that there are seven uh, school groups here. That means we have 21 questions. And that would make it the biggest number of questions I have ever facilitated in a, uh, in a uh, press club. But uh, anyway, thank you so much uh, for uh, Mia, uh, for your wonderful, wonderful presentation. And we all feel it very deep within. And you have gave us something to think about, not only tonight, but in the many months and years to come. I, I think of, of your talk about storytelling. Uh, each one of us is a story, isn't it? And uh, I think of your talk about uh, the ocean being uh, not what separates us, but what connects us. There was a voice that back in the 1960s, and that was a voice that basically brought out some of the things, some of the issues that you talked about tonight. That voice was Epeli Hauofa. Professor Epeli Hauofa, and there were a number of others, but Epeli Hauofa represented the Pacific to the world, talking about the ocean, talking about telling our, our stories. And the interesting thing is you were talking and singing, I was sitting there thinking, Epeli Hauofa uh, was a son of missionaries to Papua New Guinea, and Mia herself is a granddaughter of missionaries to Papua New Guinea. There's something about Papua New Guinea, isn't it? Uh, and Tongan missionaries that, uh, that does a lot to be able to allow a person like Mia to represent uh, the Pacific. Okay, we're gonna start with those questions. I know that there are a lot of questions some of you uh, want to ask Mia, for example, you know, do you have a boyfriend, you know? And uh, some of you, uh, particularly Toloa uh, boys, and it's a good thing that they're not here tonight. Uh, I, I, I try to ask a Toloa boy, you know, what are the kind of questions you would ask a teacher from Toloa? And you know, this smart, alecky little boy says, how many boyfriends does she have, you know? Anyway, we all know she's 24 years old, and if there are personal questions that may be a little too sensitive to ask, there is a young Mia Enoka here. Where are you, Mia? Uh, anyway, you know, she's the young lady back there, and she was the one that met you with a piece of paper where you had to write down your name. I, I am a journalist of many years, and Mia Enoka is one of my great, most reliable sources <laughs> for stories. You know, she goes with Taina everywhere, and she listens to every conversation. You know, and so if you want personal questions to Mia Kami, ask Mia Enoka, <laughs> and she'll tell you all the details. Okay, we'll move on now, and we'll start with the people that came late. <laughs> Queen Salote College. Maybe what we're going to do is have just two questions each. Is that okay? We'll start off with two questions and, uh, and how we go. And then uh, if we have time, then we'll, we'll have a third question. Queen Salote, yes, somebody has got the microphone. Just get up and, uh, and ask the questions. I'm sure you can do it in either language, uh, either in uh, Tongan or in English. And then um, Mia will answer. Go ahead. Please give us your name and what school you're from. Malo ma fa ma lie. Ko guhingwa ko Olive Tugutao. Ko lava me me ko iskun salote. Ko la kipe ko kol fa me mole atu he mau ki to muy mai he he fa fa ni. Ko ku fe u i ko what inspired you to to write about the ocean and not about the land or our culture but the ocean itself. 
Thank you. Uh, is it on? Good oh, okay. Um, thank you. Wait, what was your name again? Olive. Okay. Thank you, Olive. Um, and thank you, Kulisha uh, Fine. Yeah. So with that question, um, so I I have a lot more songs. Um, tonight I've only showed you four. Tonight I've showed you four. Um, and so right now my main focus is on ocean conservation because um, I feel that there is, because we can't save our lands if we don't save our oceans, right? Because the sea level is rising, the ocean is getting warmer. And so, you know, we want to talk about climate change and what can we do for the planet. But the way that we see it in the climate activist world is that if you don't save or focus on our oceans, then you lose everything else behind it. So everything, the ocean is the foundation of everything for us. It's a part of our culture, it's a part of our land, it's a part of our people. And so whenever I talk about the ocean, I'm not just talking about this body of water, like I said. Eh? It's a matter of how it connects everything that we are. It's a matter of seeing the ocean, not just as a place, it's not a place that you go just to go buy, get fish or to go to Lihopo at Wafu. It's so much more than that. And so that's, that's why I've, I was inspired to write more about the ocean because I felt like there's also not a lot of songs about the ocean. There's a lot of songs about land. There's a lot of songs about our culture. And I also want to learn how to write in Tongan first before I write about our culture because I feel like it's... I have, to, I have to fix my Tongan before I can write about Tonga. So, yes, I hope that answers your question. Mahalo, Mia. Fefe, I feel you know what. Just two questions, right? Feel you know what. Say it out loud. Can I have an English translation of the question, please? <laughs> what inspired you? What drove you to do what you're doing? What's your motivation for it? Thank you. Um, sorry, I do understand Tongan. It's just I couldn't hear you properly. That's the main reason. Um, don't go home and tell your parents that you listen to a plastic Tongan. Eh? And so, um, yes, thank you for the question. Hello, Fia. Um, so to answer your question, um, for me personally, I find that the, like what kind of <laughs> keeps me motivated and to push further is I have a younger sister and two of my younger sisters are here too, my sister cousins, me and Rosa, they go to Axe. Um, and I think, about, I think about them whenever I write. I think about my parents, I think about my younger siblings, my younger cousins. And um, I, I, I already can see that for a lot of my younger cousins, they don't have what we had when we were younger, when we were growing up. Like people don't go outside as often, you know, and there's not this craving to go to Tahi as often. Like I remember when I used to come to Tonga for the holidays when I was coming from Fiji, and all I wanted to do was be outside. All I wanted to do was go to Tahi, I wanted to go to Anahulu, I wanted to go you know, to Uta and all those things. These were, there were all these places that I wanted to go to that I felt I was, it was, that was how I knew that I was in Tonga. <laughs> but then I feel like a lot of the younger generation doesn't have that luxury of enjoying what we used to have back then because everything's slowly declining, technology is becoming more advanced, so of course we'd rather be on our phones, we'd rather be watching movies, we'd rather be talking to our friends <coughs> through technology. And so I just, I find that what motivates me is I just want to make sure that those that come after me, those that are younger than me, that when they grow up, they have a future, to, they have a place to call home, and that they have the sort of upbringing that we were very fortunate enough to have. And by we, I mean us born before your time. And so that's kind of the main thing, is I think about my sisters and um, my younger cousins. So, Thank yeah. you so much. Those are good questions. You know why I picked Queen Salote? Because they always ask good questions, don't they? Okay, let's go to X. <laughs> X, the first question. Don't they look good in their red? <laughs> Too bad, Matema Atonga lost. Um, yeah, um, so, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jody Pelotu. As you guys can see, I'm from X Community School. And uh, first, Miyaka, you have a lovely voice. Thank 
Yeah, before your songs, you expressed that um, that you wanted that if you had the op no, not if you had the opportunity. You expressed earlier that you wanted to walk into you know major meetings and like meetings where there are <coughs> where there are leaders, and you wanted to express your thoughts and you know what you believe in as a young youth, right? So I was wondering if, let's say hypothetically, you were a minister or you were the prime minister of Tonga. What are three movements or three initiatives that you would enact and enforce that would, you know, better the cause of what, you know, your, your, what do you call it, um, you're pushing toward? So if you were, let's say hypothetically, you were the Prime Minister of Tonga, what are the three movements that you would enact and enforce that would, you know, push your, push your movement further and, you know, encourage all of us to, to support your cause? That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank That's you. a great question. So, Tuipoloto, that's your surname? Yes, sir. Joe? Okay. Thank you, Joe. Um, that's a really good question. Um, it's a great question because uh, I don't know if you heard in the bio that Taina was saying, um, I was a law and politics student, and so I would love to get into politics here locally at some point in my life, after Toloa, of course. But um, to answer your question, uh, three things that I feel are very important. The first thing is, pushing ocean conservation and climate action into our school curriculums and teaching our children from young about the importance of being connected to our land, our ocean, and our ancestry. Um, I think pushing that more at the education level will allow more people to think critically about how can we ensure a more sustainable future for those that will come after us. That's the first thing. The second thing is continuing to raise awareness at the community level but also not starting from the top down, but from the bottom up. So we go into the grassroots communities and we talk about how can we help ensure that your communities stay safe, that your communities feel safe when the threat of climate change is advancing towards them. And the third thing is, I will have to think about it. Um, I only have two right now in my brain, but I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Thank you. Second question, X. Uh, hi, my name is Milai Otukolo. Um, so my question is similar to Joe. Um, so now that, um, thank you for your story and your songs that now that we're aware of our ocean slowly dying, um, instead of thinking big, bigger goals, because we're taught to, in order to achieve the bigger goals, we have to put in baby steps and small steps that lead us towards those goals. What are small goals that, w that you could share with us that we as students and as youth now can do that will yeah, somehow achieve um, this in the f those goals in the future? Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, sorry, your name again? Melaya. Melaya. Okay, thank you, Melaya. Sorry, you guys say your first name very fast, so I only catch your last names mostly, but thank you, Melaya. It's a good question as well. Um, I just want to make it clear, as before I answer the question, is I started writing when I was 12. Um, I'm 24 now, so you can do the math about how many years that is. But from 12 to 24, I was writing songs from about different things, things that I cared about. Um, I was singing at small events um, that where I, I would meet people and then I would show them that I could sing, I could write, and uh, of course, it was all because of introductions made by family and friends. And so I want to make it clear that being at this spot, like me being here and talking to you, isn't something that happened in like a year or two years. This is work that happened right from when I was 12, right up until now. And so you all are now 16, 15, 17, 16, 18, like that age. And I don't want you to feel like it's, it's, not, it's too late to start setting your smaller goals, right? And so when we talk about starting with smaller goals is for example, I remember when I was starting writing, um, I only wrote about things that were very shallow. Like I wrote about boys and crushes and who I liked in school. It was all very, very, very shallow sort of things. Um, and then as I got older, I started to realize, you know what, there's actually some, there's some stuff that's a little bit more important than boys and crushes. And so I started writing about these things and I set these goals for myself where I said, if I didn't go straight into big meetings like what Joe was saying. I didn't jump into these giant conferences immediately. So I had these little goals where I was like, okay, I'll sing to, at this little thing first. 
And then when I sang at that little thing, I met people. And then those people would take me to something else that was maybe just a little bit bigger. And then those people would take me into another space. And so it's a matter of the smaller goals that you create. You also need to keep in mind that forming relationships with people is a really important part of growing as a person in different spaces. And it's really hard to, to form relationships, especially at this age. And I'm not talking about romantic relationships. Keep that in mind. I'm talking about relationships that will have value in what you care about, in what you do. All right. And so setting your smaller goals, um, I can't really say much because I feel like I still am setting smaller goals. <laughs> I'm so kind of just thankful that I get to do a lot of the things that I do because I care about it. And so what I say, just, just, just believe in what, oh, this is going to sound so corny. Just believe in yourself and trust that the Lord will take you into the path that you need to go to. Because as long as you care truly about something, then nothing else can pull you away from that. And so I'm sorry if that didn't directly answer your question, but I hope it added some insight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We, we go from X in Kolomotua all the way to Maufanga. Abby Fall. First question. Hi, my name is Cecilia. Yes. Okay. Um, you said before that um, you write music from your heart, right? So I'm just wondering, like, do you have a motive or, like, where do you, like, go to that makes clear your minds and just, like, write from the heart? Because... It really inspires me when you sing. <laughs> One of your songs made me cry. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm just saying, like, it is. I want to like to somehow live live up to what you do for a living. So, and so my question is, like, do you have a special place or something like that that you went to to like write your music and help inspires us like teenagers? who are in high school and stuff. Yes, thank you. Thank you. That's a beautiful question. And thank you, I'm sorry if I made you cry. So I hope you're okay. okay. Um, sorry, your name again, Havili? Cecilia. Cecilia, Cecilia. Thank you, Cecilia. Um, so I find that, uh, so growing up, I, as Taina mentioned, so Tai had cancer when she was 12, uh, much younger than all of you. She, would, she was diagnosed with cancer of the face, like around the sinus. And it's a very rare form of cancer that actually was found in most prominent in men, older men. And Tai was a 12-year-old girl from the tiny island of Tonga who ended up getting this rare form of cancer in the sinus. And um, when, when she got sick, she had multiple operations to the face um, to the point where she couldn't sing at one point. And Tai was the real singer in our family. Um, and I'm sure Tsamu here at the back can remember this. But um, Tai was the real singer. She was the one who always told me that, you know, God gives you a gift. And if you don't use it, you're not using the gifts that God has given you. And so there was this, there was this time when um, people would always come home to our house in Kolomotua. And they would come home and they'd sit and Tai would be like, can I sing for you? And so me being 10, I was 10 at the time. So Tai, tai would ask these people, can I sing for you? And I'd be sitting in the corner like, no, don't ask them because that means I have to go and sing with you. And so the way that I saw it, I thought, why is she asking me to sing for these people? They didn't come to see me sing. They came to see her sing. And, but then Tai would always tell me, she'd say, no, no, come sit. Come sit and sing with me. And so she'd sing her songs. And then she, when she couldn't hit a note, because she was slowly getting to a point where it was a lot harder for her to sing properly. And she would get to a note that she couldn't sing. And she would tap my back. And she'd be like, yeah, sing it. So she'd tell me to sing it, and I'd sing it. And then after everyone would leave, because I would sing it like this, because I didn't want to be there. That was the whole thing. And I was so angry at her, because I was thinking, like, yo, they're not here to see me. They're here to see you. And so every time everyone would leave, she would call me into the room. She'd be like, Mia. And Thai had, like, this really sweet voice where it was so hard to be angry at her. And it was almost like she, she knew. She knew. And so none of us could be angry at her. So she'd be like, Mia, you have a gift. God blessed you with a gift. If you don't use your gift, you're wasting God's talents on you. And I would sit there like, oh, what am I supposed to say to that? And so the place that I go to when I write is a reminder from Tai that, you know, I, I wouldn't be writing if it wasn't for her because she was originally the singer and the songwriter. 
And so a lot of the, the heart that I find that I try to put into my songs is because one, it comes from a place of personal experience where writing isn't just about me. Writing is my connection to Thai. It's the way that I, I've, after she died, I felt like the only way I could stay connected with her was writing and playing the guitar, which is why I started learning how to play. And so finding what you're passionate about, it's about thinking about your stories and looking back at what has impacted you here and what do you carry with you when you continue. Sorry. And so every song that I write, it's not for me. It's not just for me. It's for Thai. It's for my younger sister, Joy. It's for you guys. It's for my sisters, me and Rosa. And it's about connecting. It's about connecting the dots so that it's not just you in the center. Because at the end of the day, there's always going to be someone that is better than you. And it's a matter of understanding that when you can write and when you can do everything that you do with what you care about and your heart, and you think about everyone that came before you, that's where you find your passions. That's where you find your heart. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. OK, before all, question number two. And Atere gets ready for the next group. I just want to say thank you so much. I'm so sorry that I made you cry. Oh, it's okay. I made you cry first. That's fine. So um, the only second question is that we discuss it as a group. So it is that do you have any message for us, like the youth of Tonga, to carry out to the community, to for us to like speak our voices for the people, to, like so they can hear us, because. Most of the time that adults don't even hear the youth voices, they just like ignore us and sometimes they pretend they know us, like we're speaking, but they do not know that we're speaking. So we just, I just ask that if you have any messages or like, like yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, thank you for that question because I, I wanted to be able to mention this. So thank you for all for that question. Um, so this is a, just a message to youth. I'd also like to give this message to our elders and our leaders. Out of, and I say this with the utmost respect, we should challenge our elders more and our leaders more. And not in the sense where we go and we be disrespectful, but in the sense where we encourage intergenerational conversations between youth, between our elders, between leaders. Because in the end, if we, if we aren't encouraged to ask questions, like the way that you guys are asking me now, then how are you going to know the answers to everything, right? We're not gonna know the answers to everything, but how are you going to know the answers to some things if we're discouraged from asking questions? And so, like I said earlier, is it's important to leave this space as a critical thinker and as someone that isn't afraid to ask questions, to challenge, to go against the grain, to go against the waves, because in the end, we have to be uncomfortable to make a difference. And I've been put in a lot of uncomfortable spaces where I've felt like I didn't want to be there. Like, I mean, like with Thai, right? She put me in the most uncomfortable position, sitting next to her, making me sing. I didn't want to be doing it, made me uncomfortable, and yet I'm here. And so the biggest advice that I could give you that comes from personal experience is you have to be uncomfortable to be able to make a difference. If you're comfortable, it means you're like this. And so don't be afraid to ask questions and to think critically, think outside the box. And to be a and to our, our elders and our leaders, I say this with the utmost respect again, um, think a little bit more openly about young people um, and the questions that they challenge you with because it's an important part of growing. It's an important part of passing on what you've learned as an adult, as an elder, to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes as um, those before us. Thank you, I'll answer your question. Thank you so much. Let's give your hand there. Okay, Atele, Tonga College, question number one. Good afternoon, everyone, and Tonga Lahawaki, and a warm welcome you from Atele School. And our first questions we would like to to ask was not taken by the performance that you have done a few minutes ago, but it was based in our you know, based in one of your poems that you had, 
created about Dear White Consultant. What was behind that? What was behind that poem? What was behind that meaning of that poem? Dear White Consultant, as was in our school exam. Was it? Yes. <laughs> no way. That's crazy. Oh wow. Thank you. Tonga, is your name Tonga? Yes. Okay, thank you Tonga. Um, yes, uh, so for those that don't know, I wrote a poem back in 2018 called Dear White Consultant. Um, and I wrote it, it was something else that came from here because like I said, I went into USP, didn't know anything about the Pacific and my lecturer was a Barangi man and, he's, and he came to all of us and he said, when you look at me, what do you see? And we were like, uh, a white man. And he was like, yeah, yeah. But imagine if I came into your house and I said, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. And I came in and I told you, bring everything else that I own, bring it here, put it there, put it there, put it there. That's the right way to do things. And we were like, I don't know. I guess we tell you to leave. And he goes, yeah, right? You would tell someone to leave if they come into your home and try to tell you what to do. And so what he was explaining was, if someone else came into Tonga, someone else came into the Pacific with no experience of how we were raised, they don't understand the context of what it's like to be a Tongan living in Tonga, and they told you, everything that you're doing is wrong. You should be doing it like this because that's how we do it back in Australia, New Zealand, America, wherever they come from. And so the poem that I was writing was called Dear White Consultant. And I got a lot of angry people about it because a lot of Palangi people were concerned that I was targeting only Palangi people. But what I really meant to say, what it was meant to sort of articulate or explain was it wasn't a target to white people. The term white was, I was using it for um, poetic licensing. So when we say poetic licensing, we just mean like in the poetic context, it fits well because when we think about consultants, sorry, does everyone know what a consultant is? No, okay, I heard a no. Uh, a consultant is someone that comes into an uh, organization or a country or a company and they basically consult. They give you advice about how to do things. Uh, that's what a consultant is. And so normally in the private sector, in the civil sector, in a lot of different parts of society, you have consultants that come into the Pacific, they come into <coughs> Tonga, and a lot of them tend to be palangi. And it's not intentional. It's just also a matter of resources. We don't get a lot of resources in Tonga. Um, at certain points in time, right? And so when I was writing this poem, it, w it came from an angry place because I was thinking about all of the interactions I've had with a lot of foreigners in Fiji. This was in Fiji. A lot of foreigners that were coming into Fiji and they were saying all these things like, the Fijians don't know how to do anything. And it's like, you need to speak English. Why are you speaking bad English in like this particular spot? And it was making me really angry. And so I've, I wrote this poem because Again, it was me trying to say how I felt in the way that I knew how, in the best way I knew how, which was through writing. And so, um, yeah, so when I wrote that poem, it, it, was, it was my response to all of these foreigners that come into the Pacific. And, um, and a lot of the time, they don't take into account how our experiences exist in Tonga, eh? and so, or in the Pacific in general. And so it was more of a, a letter to to foreigners sometimes that come into the Pacific and don't listen to our stories. Like I said, these stories are everywhere for us. And it's a matter of listening to our stories so that they understand our experiences more so that the solutions they help us provide can actually help the people in Tonga that know only the Tongan way of life, right? It's like saying how, it's like not offering scholarships to people that can't speak English just because they can't speak English, which doesn't make sense because in Tonga, the national language is Tongan, yeah. And so it's about understanding context, why, how things exist in certain spaces. And so it was more of just a, hey, I'd like you to, re to remind you that you need to listen to us a bit more than you talk. So I hope that answered your question. Thank you, Tonga. Thank you. Question number two. <coughs> Thank you. My second question is that uh, why did you say white consultant instead of white men? Or just to say our own authority, because they are the one who allow those white consultants. I'm just curious. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, you're angry too. Okay. Um, well, wait, repeat it again, please. 
Why did you say white concerning instead of white men? Or just to say our own authority, because they are the one who allowed those white consultants. Yes, okay, so he's saying, why did I say white consultant instead of white man or foreign authority? Yes, okay, so I said white consultant because um, I felt like it was a little more, like it's more like poetic licensing. So as an English teacher, I, I don't like poetry. <laughs> I don't like teaching poetry as an English teacher. But when we talk about poetry, because I'm sure all of you have covered poetry in English, yes? No, not yet, okay. It was more for poetic licensing. Like it, it just felt like the best way to sort of capture people's attention. And it was also the best way to capture the attention of the target demographic, like the target audience that I was trying to get to, um, which was mostly people that worked in that sort of area, mostly consultants. Um, but yeah, if I had said white man, it could have meant any sort of, and I felt like if I said white man, it would have immediately just been Palangis, which would have caused a lot more problems because it wasn't just about Palangis. It was a matter of foreign, um, foreign consultancies coming into the region. So, yeah, I hope that answers. Does that make sense? Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now we have my favorite school, Tailulu. Are they here? <laughs> the reason why they're my favorite school is because they have the nicest uniforms, most beautiful uniforms. But I guess they're not wearing the uniforms tonight. That's, that's not Tailulu, that's TTI. Okay, first question from TTI. To Paul Tertiary. Thank you. Uh, my name is Sahata Ogilvia, and we are from the TTI School of Music. And our first question for tonight, which is when I ask you, Mia, when you finish from Doloa, can you please come and teach us in TTI how to write music? Because you know, we only know how to learn about instruments and stuff, but not writing songs. We know how to sing very well, but not writing music, you know? And we're very inspired about how you write your music and your songs. And it very, it's very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, I think the answer to your question is sitting behind you. Um, Samu has to fight a little harder to bring me to TTI. He has to fight his father at <laughs> Toloa. And so you can ask Samu. But no, I would definitely love to work at TTI at some point. Uh, if TTI will have me at some point later. But also, get Samir to fight a little harder, then I'll come to the music academy. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and our last one. Um, we just want to know how long you write... How long it takes for you to take um, to write your songs. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, a, a song that I write will depend on... Um, how I feel about it, and also like when I need to, if I feel like it needs to be done ASAP, like as soon as possible, then I'll get it done. Um, but so Mana took me a week to write because that was one that, like I said, that song's like my baby. Um, I've, I just wanted to get it done because I was like, I really like this idea and I really want to get it out on paper. I want to get it out in song. And so Mana came like that, like super easy. Um, another song I had called Healing, that one took me like six months to write because I had the idea in February and the idea came from like this conversation I had with a lady and she said this one line and I was like, I'm gonna write that down real quick. I wrote it down and then I picked, I looked at it again in like June and then I finished it in like September and that was in 2020. And so some songs take a long time because they start with ideas that don't have the motivation or the inspiration just yet. And so I think, uh, just in terms of my own personal advice for writing, is sometimes an idea doesn't always have the inspiration just yet. And so it's important to jot your ideas down as quickly as you can because you never know when inspiration will hit you in like, whether it's in a week or whether it's in six months. And so it, it always just depends. And I think that's the reality of being an artist. Like a, as you know, like being a singer and a musician is sometimes the ideas don't always come immediately. Oh, sorry, sometimes the inspiration doesn't always come immediately. Sometimes the ideas beat 
the inspiration and that's okay. It's all right to always backseat an idea and then come back to it later. So thank you for your question. I hope that answered it. Thank you. Thank you. There's one more group and that's Tonga High School. Are they here or are they out having a ball at the Tanoa? <laughs> are they here? No, there's not. Okay. There's one more question, and I'm going to get, let Queen Salote ask the third question. That will be our final question for the, for the night. Maybe they forgot the question already. Okay. Hello, Peter, my family. Ko kung ako te pola iki ko ako yung kolis kung sa lote. Ko kifeu ipe ko kifeu ipe kataki ko e ko e ko ha e ngahi pole na ke fepa ki moya he he ko te pola iki ko inga ko e Good. Good. Were they so shy when you went to school there? How was I? <laughs> like them. Don't laugh. <laughs> oh, I meant <Say> in English. <laughs> Sorry. What are the challenges that you face with when you mm. travel every country to try to? To mokata, tika pe nila falagi. Try to make the country that travel to. Oh, okay, yes, I get it. Don't worry, I get it. Yeah, you could. <laughs> no, don't worry, I got it. I connected the dots. You're good. Um, it was fine. Yeah. Um, yes, so, in the so thank you for the question, Tepola. Okay, thank you, Tepola, for the question. And thank you, everyone, for your questions. Um, so, this particular one, the challenges that I faced when I traveled. To be honest, the biggest challenge was the fact that I lived in Tonga and the fact that I was so far away from so many different countries. That was one of the bigger ones. Um, and not being used to traveling long distances, um, which is, I feel like I've, I'm listening to myself now and it seems like a silly challenge to say. A real challenge um, going into these conferences was the fact that this is the reality of what it means to be the only Pacific Islander or the only Tongan in a lot of these spaces. So this is a story that I'll share just to finish off, if that's okay, Kalafi. Sure. Um, so something that I noticed when I go into these conferences is I will enter and I'll come in and a lot of these people don't know who I am. Obviously, why would they? I, I'm from Tonga, I don't, you know? And so I'd go into these spaces and um, I'd enter and no one would talk to me. Like I'd walk in, I'd be standing with two other women that we went to together and there are two um, women from America and people would approach us and they would only talk to the two women that were standing next to me. No one would speak to me. And um, I'd go and I'd introduce myself, I'd say, I'm a, I'm a musician. And then they would say, yeah, 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 all right, it's nice to meet you. But they wouldn't continue the conversation. They would go on and they would talk to everyone else. And then I would just be like the young brown girl that's in the room that looks too young to be there. And so a lot of people didn't bother to make conversation. And so this was a challenge that I had to get over because I realized that no, everyone that I met, a lot of the people that I met completely underestimated what I had to offer because I was young, because I was a Pacific Islander, and because a lot of the times I was the only young Pacific Islander there. And so it wasn't until I would go up and I'd introduce myself, no one's really paying attention, and then I play, I sing, by the end of it, every single person that ignored me comes up to me and say, oh my gosh, you're so talented, why didn't you say anything before? And I'm like, I told you, you just didn't listen. <laughs> And so, and so this was a really big challenge for me because it, I had to learn how to 
not let other people's first opinions of me dictate how I felt in that space. Because I had to keep reminding myself that I'm not there by myself. I'm not there for myself. I'm there for my Pacific. I'm there for my Tonga. I'm there for my community, my sister, my family. And so that was one of the biggest challenges was trying to get over myself <laughs> and realize that this isn't about me. Um, I don't, it's a, like, even though I felt like people were neglecting me in these spaces and they didn't care about me at the start until I sang and they were like, oh, it turns out you can do something. In the end, my discomfort didn't matter because it meant that I was getting my foot in the door so that by the time my sister comes up, the door's open for her already. And so um, that was one of the bigger challenges was getting over myself to realize that I was there not for myself, but for everyone else behind me. Can I just ask just one more add to that? Any difficulties being a woman that you have encountered? Yes. <laughs> was that a challenge? Yes, it is. Um, a lot of the times when I go into some of these conference spaces, and I, f I feel like I could say I've been to enough where um, I'm trying to explain something about the Pacific, and if there is another man present, a lot of the times I won't be able to finish my sentence because they'll interrupt me and they'll say, oh, yeah, 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 because you know when Tonga, we're like this and this and this, and I'm just standing there like, I was getting there. He could have just waited until I was done. Um, and so, yes, that is one of the challenges is being spoken over. A lot of men tend to talk over women in these spaces. Um, and it's, it's a hard thing to unlearn because I feel like a lot of men are raised to, there, a lot of men are raised and taught that it's okay. It's like, you know, women are meant to be the quiet ones behind the scenes while men are at the front telling what comes from behind the scenes. But um, yeah, for the young men that are here, think a little bit before you speak. If another woman is speaking, sometimes it's okay to be quiet. That's, uh, yeah. Thank you, Kafi. Thank you so much. Let's give it a hand. We're at the, nearing the end of this uh, today's press club, and I'll give this opportunity to the president of the media association of Tonga to conduct the closing remarks and closing prayer. Please be reminded um, afterwards. Don't leave. Just uh, stay mingle for a bit. There's um, dinner. And if you get your bowl and you don't want to eat your dinner, my car is parked around. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but uh, the president of the Media Association of Tonga, Mele Bloomfield. Malo. Korke hu whakai ngai whakatap ko tope ko osi hono au whaki. Kae whakoko ati ki whatongia ko whainase ake finimotoa ko ini. Eke mamo kao whaiongo ngo. ハメクイケアンガカラフェンバキファイガマリエケケエケハマオフェウコタンタイタリコンガコアロカモトエケマモトロホモフェウイイロイカラフラカンエケフェウイアファナワコフェフェケタンパスパスキアイオラキペファマ
faraong wa wia mahalo ko tai na foko antio o mia ne hanga pe foka api a hono a o ato e matala ko fufu a tonga fufu a tota me pasiki ke ne ikuna pa to no fa ho ke ho la o ifo ai wa o mo palestine e wa o amelika na na ma o ai awards ko ni pe pa pa na ke ke mo o si o i he a ngai fa matala ko ni fa nao ko tu e to fa ka tu pula ke ho mo i lo ka pa te mo to yo o to ikumi a ai ai link ke polo kalama ko na e pa le fa ka lang lang na e ang mia mia Thank you so much, and we are honored to have you here. Uh, it's the case of honor for the press club tonight. Thank you. Sponsor, the Montagoni Fabaanga, who no oato in Aipol Kalama Koni, ke Inasi ay kakaye funwa. Pero tuig ko press club, toko la hita ha ni ko farahoko emite association of tong. Ah, pia pihe ke talita project ke Vanessa Helita, pia mutani ah talita. Ihe kau farata ha pa pia mo ipek mes iho no toko ni ke farala farahoko Aipol Kalama Koni. Famalo ki he ah. Kautakmua ihe mite association of Tonga, kia Kalaf, kia pihe kia Katalina, pihe kia Tania Edwards, fafiefia siyo ke tota koe ni. Tania used to be in the media industry. Pihe kia Mark, mok nao tol koe ya ihe komiti koe press club, fa malo koe ngako fo tutu wa i programa fa of ofa koe ya. Oipon, o ato e fara malo lahi ki nga hiako kot koto ape mo lava mai i he pon. Mau tangutu mau toli a he nae ngai fehu ia. O kake nama nake ki mau whakau kau mau toli a ki ai. You guys are awesome. You ask good questions and you will make good journalists. So, mantui mau pe kwai ai ko si he tihe ki he ako ke whaio ngo ngo. Koi ngā kua ni ihi o mō fieho ko atu ihe ngā ue fāwhai o ngō ngō o fāwhai i mō tōhangi ko e fāloto lahi ko a mia o ku fie mā o koi ngā mantu ko tau mātua tāmai mō mō tōhā ko ke mō akaunteni pa mō ngō ke loe a moe ha ko a wen ko kōle atu ha ua ha ki i kō ngā hūhe tihe ke whakatoko lahi a kau fāwhai o ngō ngō koi a i tōngā ni he kake u toi whara lō lō he koi ngā mou lō tonga lele hao mou si vi e whana wako. O ato e whara mālō lahi ka te ki mou tōlu. Hono koi koto ape, kia mia, kai peheke kau whaiako mou whana wako. Pea mou e Mite Association of Tonga, koi ngā koi lawa ke whaho koi polo kalama koi ni. Koi kole e pe a mia, your next video clip, I have me and my, and all the younger journalists, Ok mau volunteer ke mau kau he backup singers and if you need dancers we are good dancers ko ki lea pe ya malom au bito. Wasn't supposed to pray but yeah. Okay. Everyone, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for another successful press club tonight. For your strength, we can scale any wall that stands in the way of what you would have us achieve. Thank you for giving us a clear understanding of the issues discussed today and a clear promise for what to do with them. Remind each of us of our individual responsibilities in the days ahead. Make our way clear as we travel along different paths. Amen. Take photos with me on the stage and then um, go with Chris Alonso and Apo and. Okay, please. Okay. 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 Okay.